Good morning, everybody, and welcome. My name is Rachel Honeysett. It's an absolute joy to be with you all this morning. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Thursday morning to be with us. Please do use the chat bar on the right hand side of your screen to chat to us, uh, ask any questions or just to say a quick hello. And if you wave your mouse over your screen, you will notice that you can now add subtitles too, if required and pause us and, and play us if, if needed. After today's webinar, if you're watching live, uh, you will be emailed a link to um, request feedback. And once this is, it's, it, this is submitted, that's when your CPD certificate comes through. So please do fill those out. It really does help us to keep shaping and designing content um, that adds value to your week. I'm really looking forward to welcoming today's guest. I met Liz um, not that long ago, actually, um, and she's incredibly humble about her achievements and career today, as I'm sure you'll soon find out. However, once we got talking, something about Liz's journey really resonated with me, and I know that it will with a lot of you too. Liz throughout her career has really led from the front, breaking through barriers and challenging the norm to really push for better. And this is an ethos that she's taken with her into her latest position at the Society of Mortgage Professionals on the board. I know from speaking with Liz how the SMP are really fostering this sense of community for mortgage professionals, aiming to do something that I think we can all get behind. Um, in fact, it's very similar to why we started out and continue to run these Skipped and Talks events to share knowledge. I read a quote the other day um, that says that if one of us wins, we all win. And I think that's often true in our industry, isn't it? We rely so much on each other, on our network around us, trade press, industry events, support from distributors, lenders and colleagues to be able to stay informed and up to date on all the changes. And um, so without further ado, with us today to share her presentation uh, is Liz Sim, CEO of Connect Mortgages. Welcome. Welcome, Liz. Thank you, Rachel. Well, <laughs> that's an introduction. Um, uh, yeah, um, feeling shy already. Um, so <laughs> I'm really pleased to be here. Thank you so much for the uh, the invite to, to be here, part of uh, Skipton Talks. And I, I've prepared a few slides just to kind of run through. Um, I, I've gone out of my comfort zone and I've, I've put um, the first slide in just to give you a, a, a bit of a background uh, about myself. So as you asked for it, so this, this is this is actually a picture of me um, in my very, very first office um, back in 1998 um, when I started the business off um, just as a, a sole trader. Um, shared the office with uh, uh, my partner at the time who decided to set up a, a, a lettings and estate agent. So we both kind of jumped into self-employment at the same time. Um, I already had um, uh, one um, a child. Um, I had two other children during the business. And in fact, um, you know, it was only a sort of a year or two into the business when I was uh, pregnant with my third um, child. And uh, when, when I had my first child, and I worked in the corporate industry, of course, I, um, I had the lovely sort of six months of maternity leave and everything that you get from that. Um, I was on the phone to a client when I went into labour and I had, had only recently started to take new people on. And uh, I rem remember very distinctively having to say, just I'm, I'm just just going to be hold on one second. <gasps> I'm going to have to hand you over to my new advisor. She's been with me a couple. Hold on a second. <gasps> and, and literally handed over this customer to um, to my new advisor and, and had my my third son. Uh, I think it was about two and a half hours later. So, um, yeah, so so the early days, you know, very much a, a family thing. And I think that's what's the great thing about our mortgage industry, actually, is um, for for females and any any family people in the industry it can be very very flexible so I found it was it was great to be able to kind of work for myself to be able to work while you know um, my children were at um, school or nursery pick them up do their dinners do the bedtime routine and then carry on to midnight if I wanted to so uh, um, they are all all pretty much grown up now as you can see how long ago I started this so um, you know my youngest is now 19 and two of my children work in the business which is lovely um, so where have we got to to now I'm very very proud that you know the last uh, 
um, this this year we've won two best network awards, which is a fantastic achievement. So I'm really, really proud of that. But it it's not been without its uh, struggles and turmoils along the way. Um, you know, I've had the critic crunch in the mix of that. That was a, a particularly difficult time. Um, lots of redundancies, split up with my partner at the same time, had to move office very quickly and downsize, but uh, hung on to the roller coaster. And I think I think I've been really, really lucky in my journey. You know, um, I've been lucky that different opportunities have arisen and, and been able to take advantage of those. And so been able to sort of grow the team back up to um, to where we are are today. Um, and, the, you know, you, you, I, didn't, I went to change my own slides there, Rachel, but of course you're in control of that. So. Don't worry, I'm still in the background. <laughs> But just to, to share kind of a little bit of some of the things that I think over the, the years um, that have helped kind of grow from where I was back then as a one man band to to where we are today and today we've got um, uh, we've got over 60 members of staff in our offices in Hornchurch. Um, we have uh, over 340 network members now. Um, biggest um, you know projected turnover this year probably of around 14 million, 1.5 billion of lending last year. So um, it really has come on quite some. And I'm just trying to think about what different things have contributed to that journey. Um, and I think a lot of that is is definitely about a taking opportunities that they come to you, see those opportunities and follow up. Follow up is really, really important. Um, but one of the, the values of the business is about building knowledge. And I think, um, you know, really up until literally the last two or three years, and I've still got a couple of clients now, I've been very heavily involved in providing customer advice as well. And there are a number of areas, I think, that are really key to providing that advice. And um, the, the first one is the fact find that you do with customers. And that's about um, understanding more than just the basics. So having started that letting agents, I do quite a lot of buy to let work. And the key thing with a buy to let customer, for example, is to understand the strategy why are they actually investing in buy to let in the first place? Um, is it for income today? Is it to give up their day job? Is it for their retirement pot later on? Is it for capital growth to be able to have some capital value? It's only when you really kind of understand the motivations, and this applies in the, the residential market as well. What's somebody's why? What do they plan to do longer term? And then you're really building a relationship with a customer that is not just about that one transaction, it's about lifetime and that's that's really seen how the number of personal recommendations and the number of clients that you know some of the clients that I'm dealing with now the people that I met back in 1998 and are still clients of the business now and so are their family members and so on and so forth and that's really about understanding that client and their motivation so that I think has been very very key um, I think um, principles of lending as well. So we all get our qualification, but the qualification doesn't necessarily um, uh, give you enough to be able to give you know, a really detailed level of advice. So beyond the qualification, again, if you're in the buy to let market, for example, do you know properly how to do the rental calculations for all the markets? Can you fully understand a credit report? Can you read a set of accounts? There's a number of advisors that sort of still struggle. If you're going to work with people that have got self-employed incomes, complex incomes, such as, you know, offshore incomes or multiple incomes from buy to let and investments and employment, You've got to really know how to read their accounts. And you've got to know how to read their tax um, overviews and so on. So really understand some of those principles around um, that lending. The other area I think is um, lender criteria and relationships. So um, there's been a massive movement to um, uh, systems that do lenders criteria these days, which is is fantastic. You know, you can use sort of, you know, uh, Knowledge Bank and 27 Tech and all of those and, and legal and general and all of those to get lenders criteria. But I think what's slightly been lost is the learning you get from doing a spreadsheet. And in fact, I almost went back to it recently because I felt that I'd fallen out of the market a bit on some of my knowledge in, in some areas. 
And if you are talking to a lender and you're asking them about their criteria and you're recording it, you're learning it and it's becoming part of what you know that you can apply. Whereas if you're just searching on a system, it, you don't retain that information. But the lender relationships has really been such a big area that has supported the growth of the business, um, working with some of the specialist lenders in the marketplace, doing joint campaigns, welcoming them into the office to train our advisors and to build the knowledge has been absolutely key. Um, and then I think the other, the, the, the final bit is, is probably being aware of what's going on in the marketplace um, and having a really good grounding of market knowledge and, and what is happening in your particular area of specialism. So I don't know if you want to just bring up the next slide for me, Rachel, just to kind of demonstrate this point. This was a slide that I used at the um, recent IMLA conference. It was about specifically about Bytelab, but some of this applies in other areas. And it was to highlight what is coming up around the corner in this particular market. So there, there's landlord pressures in terms of rate rises, which we obviously talked about. But we also talked about, for example, the new um, EPC paper, which is one of those papers that is currently going through um, the uh, uh, as a bill through government at this moment in time. So what it is saying is that any brand new vital act tenancies from 2025 will have to have an EPC rating of A to C. And that's a, a very large proportion of our, our landlords will have to bring um, a property up to standard to be able to continue to rent it. And that's going to apply to existing tenancies from 2028. Um, and, you know, advisors need to be kind of aware of this when you're having a conversation with a customer now, you want to lock them into a five year deal and then they can't access any money to do any work. It could could well be a problem. Um, but it's important to know that it's still just a bill going through Parliament. So some of these dates could change, some of the actual final detail could change. There's a little bit in that bill that says, you know, it's got to be practical and cost effective to do the work to bring it up to that rating. But what does that actually mean? We haven't seen the definition of that yet. Um, but there's there's another paper that is also going through and is less known at the moment, and that's called the, the levelling up paper. And to give you a comparison, the EPC paper is eight pages long. The levelling up paper is 328 pages long. And that levelling up bill is basically about boosting productivity, pay, jobs and living standards in all areas across the UK. So at the moment we've got pockets of areas that have got a better quality of standard of living and environment. And it's, it's about levelling up all of that across the, the, the UK. So and if, if they get this right, it could actually add tens of billions of pounds to um, the GDP. So it's actually really quite an important paper. So but what does that mean to us as advisors? I mean, there are some things there that are not related to our industry that they're doing, you know, actions like improving the broadband speed, um, public transport improvements. And we've already seen some of that. Um, but housing plays quite a big part part of this levelling up paper and, you know, um, permissions to build and giving more authority to, you know, giving more um, control to local authorities and what they do with housing. And that's really going to affect our market, particularly the new build market as well. And then as part of this, and this is why it came up in our buy to let conversation, they released a further paper called the Fairer um, Private Rental Sector paper on the just the 16th of June. Um, and that's really focused on improving those standards of living for people that are tenants. And, the, you know, that paper, if you get a chance to have a, a read of it, talks about 21 percent of the market being not fit for standard for tenants to live in. And a further 12 percent is actually, um, you know, uh, 
downright dangerous in terms of you know, so it's actually improving the quality of standard for tenants and so there's a 12 point action plan in there and there is a lot in that paper that will affect our landlords um so for example the removal of, of section 21 which is a no fault eviction and that's to stop landlords saying well that person that tenant keeps complaining about the fact that they've got no heating so i'm just going to evict them and, and put another tenant in that doesn't complain um, so there's some really good stuff in there, but there's also some, some good stuff in there that actually is helping them. So they seem to have really listened to what's going on in the market and there's some some further resources. So for those 80 percent of landlords that are actually really good landlords, there's some extra rights around things like um, eviction rights about people that are antisocial or persistent non-payers. So I suppose the point I'm trying to make with this is it's not just about knowledge of your mortgage products, it's also about being aware of what's going in, on in the marketplace so that you can have these kind of conversations um, with your customers um, and really help guide them and really be um, you know, a, a, a key pin in their in their um, their businesses, um, certainly in the buy to let market, because um, there's a lot of repeat business there. So that, this is one of the reasons you can, if you don't mind bringing up the next slide for me, Rachel. This is one of the reasons why also um, I was really, really pleased to, to be invited onto um, the board of the Society of Mortgage Professionals. And as a company, we are um, associate members now also of the Society of Mortgage Professionals, because that is all about becoming a professional advisor in the industry, raising those standards in the industry. So there are things like a code of ethics to follow, there's thought leadership and guidance, there's mentoring programmes, there's content learning hubs and so on and so forth. Um, but the challenge as a board um, that we found is that people, people sort of say, well, why, why should I be a member of the Society of Mortgage Professionals? Because I'm already a member of AME or I did my qualification with the LIBF, not the CIII, who runs the Society of Mortgage Professionals. So um, if I just if you could just show the, the next slide for me, Rachel, this is this is what how I see it fits in with an advisor. So an advisor would start getting their qualification, which would be either CMAP from LIBF or level three from the CII. Then they have to have regulation, which obviously that's going to come from the FCA. And then they might have a trade body that's going to look after their interests, which is associated with mortgage uh, intermediaries or, or FIBA for the specialist market. And then where the Society of Mortgage Professionals sits is that continued professional development to support that advisor through some of those things that I've, I've kind of just outlined. Um, incidentally, um, we're talking very much about the mainstream residential market here, but I also do sit on the board of FIBA, um, which is the trade body for the, the very specialist kind of market, so like buy to let and, and commercial. Um, and we're in the throes at the moment, and we've just got the go ahead from the market to actually design and deliver a specialist qualification. Um, uh, so it will sit alongside the CMAP and give somebody an actual qualification in things like um, commercial mortgages and buy to let, which mostly sit outside of the kind of CMAP or level three at the moment. But we're also working at the Society of Mortgage Professionals to support that after the qualification in terms of that continued professional development. So there's just, you know, it's a, it's a few pounds a month just to to be a member of the Society of Mortgage Professionals to get that kind of ongoing support. But there's some other things that are really, really interesting that are being done at the moment. So if you just bring up the, the next slide, if you don't mind. Um, and um, as well as their mentoring platform, they have now just launched um, a new career development platform called Future Me. So every member gets um, access to this completely free of charge. Um, what it actually has is over 5,000 videos, um, 800 e-learning courses. It has um, a career assessment so you can get a good understanding of your strengths and your aspirations. Um, it even has got to you know, practice your interview techniques, help you build your CV, and also outlines the kind of full 
journey on, on a professional journey in terms of kind of starting out with the basic qualification, what you can do to enhance your professionalism, so on. And if there are businesses out there that are looking to grow their businesses um, in conjunction with Skills Edge, they've got a whole apprenticeship program too. So they can take on apprenticeships, mostly funded by the government, supported by um, the, the Society of Mortgage Professionals, and they can actually help their apprentices, whether it's an admin person, somebody new in the industry, get a mortgage qualification, get a qualification in compliance, get an admin mortgage qualification. So whatever it is they need, there's that kind of support for growth as well. So um, really, really interesting things going on there. And um, hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of flavour on some of the things that are out there that can, can support people moving forward. Well, thank you so much, Liz. Um, just fascinating to hear about and, and that, that future me stuff. I was thinking about that when we spoke about it last time that, you know, when I started out as advising, well, my second role as an advisor, I went straight to being self-employed for a DA firm and the support out there was really limited, actually. And to have yeah. all of that, you know, that, that that resources that you can lean on to support your continuous professional development, um, I think it's really important and, and, a, and, a, and a gap that um, that hopefully, you know, you're filling and, and people will engage with. And, and, you know, I massively stand behind that the more uh, knowledge we all have access to, the more we share that around the industry, the better it is for everyone. So um, definitely, definitely love, yes. love what you're doing there. So um, Liz has <laughs> kindly agreed to take some of your questions. You can submit those through the chat bar on the right hand side of the screen. Um, they take a little while to load. So um, so I'll kind of uh, keep keep my eye on that chat bar. I've had one in already. Um, I'm an independent DA. Oh, there we go. Similar to what I was just saying. Um, yeah. Can I register? Um, yes. And, and and I guess for just for anyone on the line that is uh, interested, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, no, absolutely. What I'll do is I'll share with you um, some contact details, Rachel, which you can share afterwards just to put people in, in touch um, or they can just go literally onto the Society of Mortgages um, website, you know, and the, there's information there about joining and, and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, you don't have to have done a level three um, qualification with the CII to join the Society of Mortgage Professionals. So even if you've got CMAP, your pro continued professional development under Society of Mortgage Professionals can be completely separate. So literally anybody who has got um, a mortgage qualification um, in this industry or part of the industry, actually, they, they will take people that are part of the industry, um, can actually join, become a member and get access to all of those benefits. That's fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And we had one come in from Tim here. And um, this might be one to take away. I've just read it, just reading it here. This might be one to take away, so I don't want to put you on too much on the spot, but I'll, re I'll read it out because um, because uh, it's here. So as a level, so Tim says, as a level four qualified advisor through the CII who has ceased providing pensions and investment advice some eight or nine years ago, simply due to the volume of mortgage and protection advice I was given, uh, which is fantastic, Tim, congratulations. Uh, why is there no chartered route for the non-investment advice process? I have equity release qualifications and advanced mortgage exams, but I cannot undertake a module at a chartered level in place of the pension segment. Liz, have you got any uh, any comments on that? Let me say to you, Tim, not yet, <laughs> um, but sitting on the board, it is something as a board that we are very, very keen to bring through and it is something that's definitely in conversations at this moment in time um, and work in progress in terms of how we bring that chartered status um, to again elevate that pref you know, professionalism in the mortgage market as well. So please, Tim, watch this space. There you go, a good answer. There you go, heard it here first. How exciting. And another one, what is your advice to someone that's just starting out as an advisor, Liz? Um, I think, um, you know, the, the the knowledge building obviously is very key and I'm sure I probably made that, that quite obvious. Um, so investing time in yourself to build your knowledge and there are you know there are when you're new in the market there are there are three things that you do the first thing you do is you start by prospecting to get new inquiries and you go really good great guns and you you perhaps go off out networking you do some marketing and you're picking up the phone and calling people and you're prospecting really really hard um and then those deals that, if that starts to come to fruition so you start doing some mortgages on those but then people often forget that you've got to continue to prospect because if you do all the mortgages then on those first batch of prospects and then at the end of that you go ah right I've got nothing else to do so you've got to find that balance of both prospecting continuously and doing the mortgages 
And that's just two thirds, the other third being your knowledge, because if you're not continuously growing your knowledge, when you do get a prospect, you don't have enough knowledge to actually convert that into a mortgage. So if you think of a triangle of actually giving the mortgage advice, prospecting and building a knowledge and you pull all those three things together, um, that's the best way to try and focus your time in those early years. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I've got uh, actually we haven't got any more questions in chat, Bob, so I've got one for you um, that I'd like to put to you, Liz, if that's all right, before we wrap sure. up. Um, we've, we're seeing, I'll probably speak a little bit more of new build because it's kind of what I know more, but we're seeing a huge amount of change in the market at the moment, aren't we, with um, technology disruptors, with uh, energy performance, but on all parts of the market becoming an increasing factor. Um, we've got a lot of um, political sidewinds and rates uh, all over the place, uh, not a technical term, but you know, we're, we're, we're in a challenging time at the moment. What do you think is the biggest challenge for advisors over the next six months, so for the rest of this year? Um, yeah, that, that's my question. I think it's I think it's keeping up with all of those changes in the marketplace, particularly on the rate side of things, you know, um, daily, hourly rates are being pulled and are increasing. And you've got to be really, really careful as an advisor to try and get get it right the first time. So what I've seen, for example, is where somebody has done a very, very good job, but they've made a slight error and we're all human. We all make make errors and recommended a product at a loan to value, for example, of 90 percent. Um, then when it's gone to the lender, it's all been booked and so on, the lender writer started looking at it and then said, actually, because of the type of client will still lend, but will only lend on 85 percent. That changes the product that needs to be picked. But all of a sudden, because we were two weeks to get to that point, the rate that they would booked at 90 percent, obviously, that's gone, but so are the rates that were there at 85% two weeks ago, and now it's half a percent more. So you've got a complaint waiting to happen because your customer, if you've got it right two weeks ago, would have got a better rate than today. So you've got to really, it's really, really tempting to kind of rush because you're trying to beat those rate pulls. Uh, but you've also got to make sure it's absolutely accurate and you've dotted all the I's and T's with regards to the criteria or potentially it could come back and bite you. Really good advice. Thanks, Liz. And really um, insightful for us as well to see that from a, from a broker's perspective. And and we're all, we're all working together to try and keep things as, as straightforward and, and simple as possible. Um, so thank you so much. Um, I will I'll now say thank you. Um, thank you for joining in. Um, please do, of course, join us next week to our audience where my co-host Derek Adams will be joined by the fantastic Christine Newell to talk about one of the hottest topics of the year, uh, which is consumer duty, uh, which if hasn't cost your Radar, yeah, it's absolutely worth having a, a, a good base level understanding of this because it will impact all of us uh, wherever you sit in the value chain across across lending. Um, so you can register for next week's webinar um, or indeed any of the remaining webinars in the series on the Skip and Talks Hub on our website. Um, of course, you can always use any of our resources. We talked a lot about resources today, haven't we? Um, such as our podcast series um, or our webinars on YouTube. Just search Skip and Talks either on YouTube, Spotify or your favourite podcast streaming service. Uh, you, you can't escape us these days, we're everywhere. <laughs> um, so yeah, all, all I'd love to say is a massive, massive thank you to, um, to today's guest speaker, uh, to Liz, uh, for being with us this morning. Um, really, really great to have you um, have you with us and our audience. Um, we did start, as I mentioned at the beginning, we did start Skipton Talks to, based on the idea of sharing and supporting um, businesses, your businesses, your conversations with your clients. Please do use those feedback forms to send us your, your suggestions. I promise that Derek and I read every single one of them um, and it really does help us to keep keep innovating and choosing new, new topics for each week. So thank you to today's guest, Liz, CEO of Connect, Mor uh, Connect Thanks Mortgages. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you. And uh, thank you all for tuning in to Skipton Talks. See you